Well, welcome back once more to the bulletin. My name is Abdi Aziz Ashim and Asal Language at the bottom end of your screen is Joyce Wairimu. Let's kickstart this final bulletin. As the rest of the world prepares to usher in the new year, Sydney, Australia has already welcomed the new year with colours dominating the Sydney Bridge to welcome the new year. The celebration happened amidst the backdrop of protesters who had called for the cancellation of the celebration, claiming that they were likely to traumatise a section of the population who are affected by the raging Australian fires. The Australian bushfires that have been blamed on high temperatures and month of drought has so far devastated a number of the country's section. Have a look. Well, I hear New Zealand also has marked the new year and we hope uh, past midnight, Kenya will also join in the rest of the world. Now, let's get to hear what the president had to say during this uh, auspicious occasion where President Uhuru Kenyatta has made his end of year message and promised that the new year promises new things and opportunities to the citizenry. Have a look. The end of a year and the beginning of a new one provides us all with an opportunity for reflection and introspection as well as to plan. Most importantly, it is a time to give thanks to the Almighty God for the gift of life and for his care and provision to all of us. Fellow Kenyans, the decade that is coming to a close has been one of great significance to Kenyans. Our country has undergone the most consequential transformation since the dawn of our republic by ushering in a new constitutional order as well as successfully implementing a devolved structure of governance. Looking back at 2019, while we must also accept that it was not without its challenges, I believe we can take pride in the extent to which we have made progress towards the full attainment of our national aspirations as espoused by our Constitution the Kenya Vision 2030, and indeed as focused through our big four agenda pillars. In the year 2020, we will continue to make Kenya a better nation for all her people as we build bridges of brotherhood among our people by weaving 
a stronger fabric of patriotism and nationhood. A key aspect of this quest will be anchored under the Building Bridges Initiative, a process that is aimed at comprehensively addressing both historical and emerging national challenges. Away from the president's message, even as we are in the last hours of 2019, we spoke to some Kenyans on the streets who almost concurred with the findings of that of TIFA report from a failed economy to bad leadership. Let us now listen to what they had to say. Kumwaka umekua mwaka mgumu asa kwa sisi vijana ambayo watuna ajira na tumekua tukiangaika pesa ikapotea kidogo tusijue ilienda wapi biashara yetu ikarudi chini watu wetu ni wakora viongozi wamekuwa wazi wanaona vile wanaiba sasa tag si go juu ni ngumu kenya kusonga mbele 2019 imekuwa mbaya kama mimi unakumbuka watu wetu walichomekea Ethiopia sasa ile kitu iko tungangane na ile kidogo tunapata ndio tuone kama Mungu anaweza tujalia tufanye maendeleo Oh, wa Kenya mserike happy new year poa muwe na resolution zile zina mata sio zile zina wafanya muwe na stress Kenya, Kenya economy is of a stretch I don't know whether it is the absence of uh, opposition that makes us to have no money in the pocket so I will ask the president and the, his excellency Raila Molodinga to work to, as in as much that they are working together they should also ensure that the looted money is brought back to the treasury. In terms of corruption, the way Jubilee government is dealing with it, uh, I see there is a way forward, but m uh, much has not been done. We see some of the corrupt officials, they are arrested, and they are taken to court. After all, they are released on the bail, and they still get back to office. Mwaka huu wa 2019, ambao na umegemea kuisha sasa umekuwa ni mwaka ambao ni mzuri lakini pia umekuwa na matatizo tofauti tumeendelea vizuri ujenzi wa barabara ambao mengi lakini pia kumekuwa na upungufu wa hela kwa mfuko na uchumi umedidimia siasa zimekuwa mbaya na mambo yamekuwa sio mazuri sana katika nchi yetu well, still with the New Year's matters, in his New Year's message addressed to the greatest source of that hope, the world's young people, UN Secretary General, that is, Antonio Guterres, says the world needs young people to keep speaking out, keep thinking big, keep pursuing boundaries, and keep up the pressure. The UN boss has stressed the impact of climate change and global warming, insisting that the UN will not relent in pushing for better times ahead. From here at United Nations, I join you in welcoming the new year. We enter 2020 with uncertainty and insecurity all around. Persistent inequality and rising hatred, a warring world and a warming planet. Climate change is not only a long-term problem, but a clear and present danger. And we cannot afford to be the generation that fiddled while the planet burned. But there is also hope. This year, my New Year's message is to the greatest source of that hope, the world's young people. From climate action to gender equality to social justice and human rights, your generation is on the front lines and in the headlines. I'm inspired by your passion and determination. You are rightly demanding a role in shaping the future, and I am with you. The United Nations stands with you and belongs to you. 2020 marks the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. We are launching a decade of action for the Sustainable Development Goals, our blueprint for a fair globalization. This year, the world needs young people to keep speaking out, keep thinking big, keep pushing boundaries, and keep up the pressure. I wish you peace and happiness in 2020. To other news now, post-mortem examination on two boys who are allegedly executed by police in Madhari Valley slums last week has revealed the two teens were shot more than five times. The two, Peter Irungu, 18 years old, and Brian Murangu, a 19-year-old, who were accused of stealing a mobile phone, were allegedly killed by the police on Christmas Eve in what the police claimed was a shootout between the police and the criminals. 
On Christmas Day, many Kenyans were enjoying their holiday. However, for charity, not her real name, it was not so merry. Her 19-year-old brother, Pite Rungu, was shot dead in cold blood. And the pain is still evident in her eyes and seems to be too much to bear. Because to me back see what will mimi na ye to me zalua mimi na yena to me back to see what will he's the only family neza semani konayo. So in any hat sana niki majin walulua tu na mtu watu yuwa children's hope. Charity had initially been keeping tabs on her brother through his friends, and she was informed that the brother was making a living through sweeping roads and that he was not a criminal, as many perceived. So na shtuka sana nikisikia brother wangu anezauliwa akiwa innocent nikaenda pangani police station kwenda pangani police station wako niambia kitu yote waliniambia tu hakuna wat vijana kama wao wameletwa adin kajaribu kuwakangalia jina yake wako niambia anything Moreover Irungu and his friend Brian Mungalu were winding down the evening outside Good Samaritan Children Home in Mavare with friends when allegedly four police officers wearing civilian clothes picked them up Witnesses claim that the two of the boys were taken to Amana petrol station in Pangani and shot dead. So, me like to neza say, menye gaba yetu mekwa mkinya mazia sana vitu za mavijana wa kiuliwa, mumekwa mshuguliki na atijuwa se wa naishi geto. Kwa ni wase wa geto si watu, ama watuto wa geto si watuto kama wale. Wezi enda rundu upate ati mavijana wa wanafukuzu ati atijui mefika saine, lakini geto ukifika saa tatu unafukuzu. Brian Mungalu, an 18-year-old, finished his Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education this year, and his brother said he was the hope of the family. Kufanya ae yote napata mbradhangu wa miangamizu watu ivo tumbure, alikuwa, just mbradhangu alikuwa to that innocent that, aliona uu rafiki yake mwenye ambao alikuwa nasoma na yaya, ambao wanaisi chundre nomu na yaya, aliona enyewa nashutiwa, haka sema, musimuwe, the bodies were later collected by uniformed officers and are lying at the city mortuary till today, where the family of the two teens viewed their bodies today. The postmortem, spearheaded by the Independent Medical Legal Unit, a Nairobi-based governance, health and human rights non-profit organization, revealed that the two were shot more than five times in the stomach, head and neck. One of the family members have confirmed that the investigations have commenced into the killings of the two teens. Both families now want investigative agencies to intervene so as to get justice for both Paul and Brian. Abdiaziz Ashim, Ibru TV, Nairobi County. To Wajia County now, where a section of political leaders from northeastern region have urged the government to intervene and help combat locusts that have invaded the area, led by Aldas Member of Parliament Aden Kainan, Mandera Senator Mohamed Mohamud, and a host of MPs, the leaders say the influx of locusts has affected most crops in the region. Our reporter Jeff Kaemba with more details on that story. This is the picture in Wajia County and its environment. A swarm of the locusts now taking the center stage in the northern part of Kenya. The locusts which are said to have migrated from Somalia have covered the entire vicinity alarming the area leadership. Just by definition, locusts are a collection of swarming faces of certain species of short horned grasshoppers. They become more abundant and aggressive and therefore becoming forming deadly swarms. Led by the elders member of parliament Eden Kainan, Mandera Senator Mohamed Mahmoud and a host of the members of the parliament have appealed to the national government to intervene. And what we find is that safety nets, safety nets in terms of uh, dealing with emergencies needs to be set forth and right. We are appealing to the government because it's apparent right, right now that the national preparedness is lacking. During the colonial time we used to have a particular department, the locust control unit. The residents who rely on pastoralism are now worried about their livelihoods as the millions of the destructive pests threaten to wipe out the vast grassland. This is a natural disaster. And a disaster must be confronted by the whole nation. This is an invasion. An invasion normally even you have to protect your country when you are invaded. This time not by a foreign army but uh, locust, which actually are worse than an invasion from foreign army where you know how to defend yourself. Some of their crops have been destroyed as the insects that remove in swamps continue to leave a trail of the destruction in their work. So we want to inform the nation that the disaster which is already set in 
and we must deal with it. If we don't deal with it, in fact, uh, all the gains that have been made in terms of the rains we get, the forage we hunt, will be destroyed. It started from Ethiopia, Somalia, Djibouti, all those agencies has passed. Because this has the potential to destroy our livelihoods, and something has to be done. You can only eat locust after you destroy the locust. When you destroy the locust, when you capture it, when you uh, control the migratory route of the locust is when it, you can harness the economic value of the locust. But <laughs> if you don't control, then it will continue to destroy the vegetation and it will affect the entire pastoral production. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization file, the tens of the thousands of the hectares of the land are being destroyed in what has been termed the worst invasion in 25 years. A foul indicated that the locusts have damaged about 70,000 hectares of the farmland in Somalia and the eastern Ethiopia, threatening food security in their countries. Reporting for April TV, I'm Jeff Haimba. To security matters now, the Directorate of Criminal Investigation has disbanded all flying squad subunits within the country and replaced them with new units naming Sting Squad Headquarters and Special Service Unit respectively. In communication from the DCI, the squads were disbanded, effective today with the department saying that no officer will present himself or herself to the public as such. The George Kinoti led department said that the officers deployed to the new unit had undergone intense training in and outside the country, leading to upgrading of competencies, enhanced skills and knowledge. The Sting Squad Headquarters, SSH, will have a maximum of 50 specialized trained officers who will respond to specific cases. The cases include armed robberies, kidnappings, motor vehicle theft, sale and distribution of contraband, and substandard goods. Kinoti said both the squad, SSU and SSH, will be linked directly to the Crime Research and Intelligence Bureau for intelligence-driven operations alongside other augmenting units, including cybercrime, ballistics, scene of crime, principal crime registrar, crime intelligence unit, and homicide. The statement say the units will work closely with other state security agencies for information and intelligence sharing, among others, and will be standby 24-7 as needed in critical crime emergencies within the country. The Flying Squad Unit has in the past been accused of conducting its work in a manner that violated the law, including extrajudicial killings of suspects. Reporting for Ebru TV, I'm Kaindo Stefan. Elsewhere, the National Police Service has released names and photos of three suspects believed to be part of a notorious criminal gang operating in Nairobi and Mombasa. According to the police, the three suspects are armed and dangerous. The three include Arafat Chalo Masai, Juma Waziri and Salim Ahmed Mohammed. According to police spokesperson Charles Owino, police are looking for the three in connection with criminal gangs in Nairobi, Mombasa Police have urged members of the public with information on the suspect's whereabouts to report to the nearest police station or contact the police on 999-911 or 112. To the corridors of justice now, the court has directed beer manufacturers East African Breweries Limited and Keroche Breweries to stop a further advertisement on the contest of a beer bottles pending hearing of the case filed by six beer distributors while ordering the parties to maintain a status quo. Justice Grace Nzioka noted that the dispute stemmed from advertisement placed by the two beer ma makers more than, week, uh, more than a week ago, with each accused using the other of the use of beer bottles. The case will be heard on January 3rd. We have yet to be served with the, with the PO, which we have just learned that it's already been filed. 
and in the circumstances month to close the year at 5.82 percent as food and non-alcoholic drinks prices rose a notch higher according to the kenya national bureau of statistics Inflation rose from 5.56% in November to 5.82% in December. The inflation rate has been on the rise from September, where it stood at 3.83%, rising at 4.95% in October. Prices of some of the main food commodities has risen as compared to December last year. According to KNBS, the food and non-alcoholic drinks index increased by 1.46% from November to December. Well, as Kenya ushers in 2020 New Year in style, 2019 has been a tough journey for the common Mwananchi. Despite a handshake deal between President Uhuru Kenyatta and opposition chief Raila Molodinga, whose sole purpose was to quell political animosity in the country and also providing a safe and enabling working environment for Kenyans. The handshake, which culminated into the Building Bridges Initiative Report BBI, created more political divisions compared to its sole purpose. Our our political affairs reporter Jeff Haimba gives you the paper trail to the 2019 happenings, a year with ups and downs. As 2019 year closes, Kenyans are so much hopeful for a brighter 2020. Majority of the Kenyans say 2019 year was full of adversities, a year which preceded the 2018 year, which gave birth to the handshake between President Uru Kenyatta and the opposition leader Raila Odinka. It was a year which culminated into intense politics even with the deal meant to heal political tension in the country. Through the handshake, the Building Bridges Initiative team was formed uh, to carry out the analysis of the nine-point agenda of a key issues facing Kenya before, during, and after the polls. Despite supporting the deal between President Uru Kenyatta and the opposition chief Raila Odinga, uh, Deputy President William Ruto is said to have been excluded over the deal marshal his lieutenants by faulting the motive of the handshake. Sharp divisions engulfed with the proponents and the antagonists of the handshake and the BBA looking horns at each other in church events and other political arenas. The renewed fight against corruption in the country intensified as from 2019. The entrance of the DPP Nudin Haji as the director of the public prosecution, George Kinot as the director of the criminal investigation DCI, Twali Mbarak as the CEO of the Ethics and the Anti-Corruption Commission ESC, elevated the confidence among the Kenyans through their famous Kamata Kamata Fridays. Through the efforts of the three agencies, a big fish in the country were netted. Some of the notable political figures in the country was the Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Rotich over the Kimarel and the Arrow Dam scandal. The two dams allocated 63 billion Kenyan shillings for the construction and sparked a political debate with a rift emanating from Ruto scams defending Rotich as opposed to Kenyatta Raila allies who called for a quick action after Mselem Davadi unearthed about 21 billion Kenyan shillings said it to have been looted. <laughs> Apart from Roti, the governors were not spared either. Busia, Governor's Hospital of Jamong, was the first governor to be arrested and charged in a court of law for looting public money. However, Ojamong of the ODM party is the only lucky governor after escaping the wrath of Justice Mumbingugi, barring the governors implicated in graft from accessing their office. <laughs> Samburu Governor Moses Lenal Kulau was arrested over claims of looting 84 million Kenyan shillings public money. Next on the right of the DPP Nudin Haji was Kambu Governor Ferdinand Waititu, uh, together with his wife, who were netted over claims of stealing 51 million Kenyan shillings, uh, public money. Uh, the latest big catch by the DPP Nudin Haji is the Nairobi City County Governor Mike Songo Mbuvi. Uh, Mbuvi was the first governor to be arrested after the cat and mouse game between him and the ESC officials uh, for swindling 357 million Kenyan shillings at City Hall.
Uh, the three governors who had massive support uh, to the Deputy President William Ruto uh, have since been barred from accessing their offices. Uh, Migori Governor Kotobaru is still fighting for his case in court after being implicated in the murder of the Rongo University student Sharon Otieno. All the arrests have been termed as political with Ruto Alice claiming the move is aimed at clipping his hopes at State House. After the intense process of the collecting views from the Kenyans, the BBI report was born with the recommendations giving the Prime Minister lesser powers. But besides politics of the handshake, Kenyans feel the economy has been tough. A large number of the Kenyans did make a splash in Christmas due to financial crisis compared to the previous years. But as the Kenyans usher in the new year, the government spent 6 billion Kenyan shillings on a system to capture and store data collected from the 36 million Kenyans. The system was known as the Uduma Number Hive until now. The Kenyans are yet to receive the results of the Uduma Number. Reporter for April TV, I'm Jeff Haimba. Now to a light moment where the art of carving a great piece to camera is not easy in every sense of it. One has to crunch and strive towards getting the perfect piece. Today I bring you the other side of the preparation of TV news and reports from our team here at Ebru TV. Enjoy. I'll turn off for a very, um, you know, fun. Favorite. <laughs> <laughs> segment. We'll be telling you why people are going bananas in some parts of this lovely world of ours. I bust him to the margin if for a highly odiquam on a danda. Jesus is Lord! <laughs> By now, ESC Chief Executive Officer Tolbi Mbarak has a heavy task in investigating some of his officers. Chai! Officers. Mamuzi Yelio Toka Katika Mahakama Rufam Wakahu. Haya kuwa fraisha wengi. Is it funny? No, it's not funny. It is an appice to... Continue. It is an appice to players in the Joakali industry after the government has announced that it is... It... Funke! Na Tottenham waliwalaza Juventus... Jesu! Juventus... We do keep quiet! With the large numbers that flocked in at the Nayo... Chai! Ay! Jesus. Oh my god. Are you normal? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Go down, bro. Hey, I'll come look at this. What remains is if Priska and her daughter will get the justice they need and the main suspect behind... <laughs> what remains to be seen... <laughs> I think he has a good outro. Pull up, pull up. Yeah. So that is what I was telling you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You don't know nothing, but I'm going to tell you something. So this uh, type of vaccination given to all girls at 10 years old will aim to prevent most of the infections. Oh my God! Matokeo haya ya kitangazu wa siku kumi na nane badai. Basi ni haki kishotu. Who is your usefulness in life? I pray for your school fees to go and learn. You maisha, like you maisha kweli. You maisha, you maisha angale tu namani. Wanafunzi kote nchini wa kidato cha nne hii leo wanatamatisha rasmi mtihani wa KCSE. Huku matokeo hayo yakitarajiwa kutolewa baada. Gari. Go. Kab. Gosh. Oh my god! <laughs> Nakuona eh? Nakuona? Nakuona sana! Governor wa Nairobi Mike Mbuvi Sonko akajipata taabani kwa kutokuwa na naibu wa governor wa kushikilia hatamu ya uongozi huku kesi yake kiendelea. Haya ni kwa mujibu wa wanasheria ambao wanasema kuwa 
Sonko. Ah, Eric Sonko, what are you doing? As 24 candidates scramble for the Kibra by election seat, a number of. Chai! A number of. Get out right here, man! Kazungu Toka, Kazungu, Kazungu Bana in a calm, good Toka, 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 Over 27,000 centers that are set for the Kenya Certificate Primary Examination. Oh, what is wrong with me today, I swear? We give up. To not give up. There is a growing understanding that art, that drawing, there is a growing understanding that drawing is not just an art form. Ha! Shaka! Can't believe this! What is this? There is a growing understanding that drawing is not just an art form. It is a powerful tool that does not only take an innate... Ooh, Having been in the business for close to 10 years now, Hilda and her daughter Diana have urged other entrepreneurs to develop confidence in the... De ah! <laughs> Well, well, those were light moments made by our very own Davis Mberia, and we promise you more bloopers in the coming year. Now let's dive in into the world of sport. The national women's volleyball team, Malkia Strikers, will jet out of Yonde, Cameroon this Friday for the upcoming Africa Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games qualifiers slated for January 5th to 9th. Head coach Paul Bitok has today named his final strong 14-member squad that has been in over a month residential uh, training camp at the Kasarani Indoor Arena. The last time when Malkia Strikers represented Africa, at the Contrenio event was during the 2004 Greece Championships. Experienced setter Janet Wanja, who misses the Africa Olympic Games qualifiers, is the only player in the current squad who graced the event. However, the team is much ready and up to the task. This is the only chance that we have, especially to me. I want to come home here happy. We will use all our efforts to see that we qualify and get this only ticket for Africa. We are not scared of them. We are ready for the challenge and uh, one thing that we are assuring ourselves and even the players is uh, that uh, we are going to make it. The Cameroon outing will be led by Captain Mas Moim. Around her is experienced Valid Makuto, Noel Murambi, Elizabeth Wanyama, Agrippina Kundu and Edith Wisa. However, KCB's Jemima Siang will be making her first appearance in the national team colours during the qualifiers. This is a squad that I have mixed uh, young and also experienced players. Uh, I know uh, when to use them and uh, we have worked very hard. All the players were in the same level. It was very, very difficult for the coaches to choose. Returnee John Chelegat will hope to seal the void left by Incha Triza Tuka, who was on October ruled out with a long-term injury. First rising Sharon Chepchumba still recovering from an angle injury, despite getting a selection, will know her fate tomorrow. We are not releasing anyone. All the players will remain in camp until the day we go. So that in case of anything, we have, uh, we have uh, the players around with us. It's the first time for more than 15 years, uh, one child not in the team. So we usually have special uh, training for the setters to see that we cover the, the, the the space that was left by Janet Wanja. Having failed to secure an overseas training camp and international friendly matches, the RS Dejo training camp has too been hit with several challenges. However, their main rivals Cameroon and Egypt have been pitching camp in Poland and Brazil respectively. <laughs> Brazil 
watu kika please uko comfortable uko focus kila kitu inawezekana Cameroon wameenda nje mara mingi kutraini nje but tukikutana na wao bado tunafanya nini tunawashinda let's hope that what we have used and what we have trained for will help us we should not think about the, the advantage of the opening that they managed to train outside Kenya will tussle against Nigeria Cameroon Egypt and Botswana in the Five Nation tournament where they will compete for the sole slot reserved for Africa. Definitely the pressure is there but uh, uh, we have seasoned coaches and players. I am confident that uh, our players and the coaches are equal to the task. They will be able to handle the pressure and deliver the win. Benjamin Mwaka, Ebro TV Sports. I will be requesting that we simply take directions to be able to, and in our, in, our, in our case, we'll also be asking for 21 days to put in our responses. One day pill. So in such kind of circumstances, when you even look at the orders, they don't really impact on the interest of fourth and fifth respondent, on the third respondent, that is the competition authority. Basically, this is a fight between plaintiffs, applicants, and the, res the first and second respondent. And therefore, I hold the view, on one hand, you can agree, give them time to bring whatever they want to bring, but particularly on the issue of their appeal and our interim prayer of injunction, which we shall be illustrating has been. Elsewhere, Ivorian striker Gislan Yipke Jinamin has completed a move from Kenyan champions Gormahia to Tanzania giants Yanga SC. The forward joins Yanga on a two-deal year deal, ditching the financially challenged Kogalo barely six months after signing for them. Gore has financial issues since Sportpesa terminated all sports sponsorship in August, with players now going for months without salaries and allowances upper FIFA laws and a player is free to move if he is not paid for two months and it is the opening that Gislin has used to force a move to Yanga. And finally, Yanis, who missed two games with a back injury, tallied 23 points as Milwaukee Bucks breezed to 123-102 to 102 victory over the Chicago Bulls. The reigning NBA MVP come the second league leading scorer with an average of 30.5 points per game, played just 27 minutes and sat out the final five because of the one-sided margin. Gaffer. Uh, Zach with Hill on him. Zach fires. Tough shot. Kobe White. Now Thaddeus tees another one up. That one's good. Well, those NBA results bring, brings us to the end of our final bulletin of this year on this Ebru primetime edition on the 31st of December 2019. And we promise new things and new ways in the coming year. My name is Abdiaziz Ashim. Our sign language interpreter at the bottom end of your screen has been the lovely Joyce Wairimu. And to the production team that has produced this bulletin, thank you so much and Happy New Year.